Today's event is taking place on the stolen land of Tahona Odom, Odom Jewett, Pasquayaki, and Hohokam people's territory, colonized and now known as Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona. Connecting with this land and holding a moment of remembrance is one way WFSA practices decolonizing and unsettling the systems of colonialism that live around and within us. Good afternoon and welcome to the Women's Foundation for the State of Arizona's virtual luncheon, day three. To kick off our final day of programming, we join WFSA Chief Strategy Officer, Emma Fryer in studio. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for the final day of our 2022 virtual luncheon. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and staff, thank you for creating community with us. Today's program will be featuring the incredible work of our nonprofit partners, UNIDAS participants, and the innovative solutions we created together to move the needle for women and girls. WFSA's history is rooted in community. The concept for WFSA began in 1991 when two Tucson women, tired of philanthropy's failure to address the economic challenges facing women, decided to take matters into their own hands. With $20,000, Melody Rubido and Harriet Silverman launched their idea for a women's scholarship fund in Tucson, recognizing that women faced a myriad of economic challenges, high rates of poverty, and systemic barriers to self-sufficiency and opportunity, and that philanthropy was failing to address any of these issues. It quickly became apparent that the need was greater than anyone could have imagined, and so Melody and Harriet officially established the Southern Arizona Women's Fund at the Tucson Community Foundation. For over 30 years, WFSA was sustained by passionate and dedicated volunteers, board members, and a staff of one or two at a time. As the foundation grew, the organization evolved with four key pillars guiding the vision of WFSA, research, grant making, advocacy, and innovative solutions. As the team grew, so did the impact. Award-winning programs like UNIDAS grew over the years and new programs were created. WFSA grant making steadily increased with more than $20 million awarded to over 600 organizations to date. WFSA's research helped inform and transform people across the state. And the growing focus on advocacy led to WFSA advising the executive office and passing legislation that helps hundreds of thousands of Arizonans. In 2021, as WFSA celebrated 30 years of impact, we could not ignore what was increasingly apparent. We all witnessed the pandemic destroy over three decades of momentum for women, and we knew it was essential to scale our work across Arizona. In October 2021, we announced that we were expanding our reach to include the whole state and changed our name to the Women's Foundation for the State of Arizona. We are proud of our Southern Arizona roots and look forward to another 30 years of innovating to create social, political, and economic change that achieves equity for women and girls. Before we get started, we encourage you to stick around until the end of today's event as we are raffling off one round trip ticket courtesy of our exclusive airline partner, Southwest Airlines. WFSA has scaled its presence statewide with three key programs paving the way for equitable access for women and girls. The Women and Girls of Color Fund, Pathways for Single Moms, and UNIDAS all of which we will share in greater detail during today's program. Our mission at WFSA is centered around gender equity, which cannot be realized without racial equity. In commitment to our mission and our promise to participate in the movement to build an equitable society, we are dedicated to working with others to redirect funds, increasing opportunity for BIPOC community members, and to use our own funds to support women of color-led organizations that are building an equitable economy. We live in a world where only 1.9% of philanthropic dollars are going to nonprofits serving women and girls. Less than 1% of philanthropic dollars support women of color. 
As a result, in the spring of 2021, WFSA launched the Women and Girls of Color Fund to coincide with our annual grant making program. This fund was established to invest in organizations led by and serving women and girls of color with gender and racial equity as the ultimate goal. The fund demonstrates WFSA's accountable, accountability to women and girls in black, indigenous, and people of color communities by way of unrestricted operating funds. We know that organizations doing the work are best equipped to make decisions specific to their needs for improving outcomes for the women and girls they serve. The goal of this fund is to support work that takes into account the unique needs and circumstances of women and girls of color, including visibility, safe spaces, and representation. During our first year of funding, WFSA granted $325,000 across five BIPOC serving organizations. The YWCA of Southern Arizona, Phoenix Legal Action Network, Beyond the Hurt, Siouapaktli Collective, and Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro. One of the 2021 grantees, the Siouapaktli Collective, exemplifies the kind of work that truly transforms communities. Here's their story. And so this morning we greeted the sun, another beautiful day and beautiful morning right now here in Phoenix. And we wanna just to acknowledge the changing seasons, acknowledging the, the elements, the rain, the fire, the wind, the earth, and then being able just to be thankful for to these lands, these fruitful lands. Traditionally, all of South Phoenix were fields and orchards and vineyards and sustained the city for many, many years with uh, gentrification and development. This territory that we're at is one of the few still in South Phoenix that's actually being used to feed the community. The work of the collective really is what we like to consider from womb to tomb and seeing the the value or the importance of having food and accessibility to food, accessibility to water, accessibility to, to resources, be what supports our families at the core. In the simplest of terms, the Siwapali Collective supports indigenous families. We do that through four key ways, four key pillars. So one is through cultural revitalization and education, reproductive justice and birth equity, food justice and land restoration and consultation and advocacy. We started the Seopakli Collective now going on six years and it initially was birthed through a time in my life where I needed support the most. I had just lost my mother, I was having my second child and my postpartum depression kicked in and put out a call on social media asking for support, asking just to, for people to meet up, really. Eight people showed up with their babies and all, children. And then every time afterwards, we just planned out to get together. Every meeting we had, had more and more people show up. At one point we had to move to a different coffee shop because we no longer fit in the space. And so then we ended up just talking about parenting, talking about our overall health and what we needed. And that became the creation of our very first signature event now, which is our ancestral womb wellness gathering, which our very first event brought in over 200 people seeking traditional knowledge sharing. We then, as a collective, you know, we originally started with 13 members, founding members. At that point, we were thinking, well, what else can we do? You know, and being able to see how the need was evident in our community, ranging from, you know, just learning about traditional healing and wellness, and then how, how can we continue to support that? We don't even realize it all the time, but we really are one of the primary indigenous organizations in Phoenix that deal with maternal health, birth work, and support of families. I think the impact of Siwapatli Collective in places like Phoenix is so profound because it is an organization that understands deeply the trauma that our community carries. It deeply understands the assets that our community has and the ancestral wisdom and knowledge that we have and that we carry in our wounds. 
The Siwa Barkley Collective has impacted me by welcoming me to share my gifts and talents as a community birth worker. They paid for, for me to take a course to be able to prepare for this big test, you know, and this big test is what people have to take to become a licensed midwife. People don't hand that to you, you know, you really have to search for that and you have to fight for it to finish school. One of the most inspiring initiatives that the Siwapakli Collective leads is the Collective Birth Fund. This program allows for culturally relevant birthing plans for families in their community. The Collective Birth Fund was started after the abrupt closure of the Phoenix Indian Medical Center's labor and delivery unit. That was back in August of 2020. So we were called to the table as one of the local indigenous organizations to respond. We define the Collective Birth Fund by thinking about it as a dignified, full-spectrum birth support fund. The reason why those words are so important is because when we thought about the treatment that families were receiving as far as not being informed, literally walking up to a door, potentially pregnant or in labor, and then having to realize that they needed to walk to another part of the hospital, that that wasn't the definition for us of dignified care. Also from the full spectrum perspective, many cultures, but particularly in indigenous families, the entire family is a part of the birthing process. They have expectations, they have uh, rituals, they have ceremony, they have roles that they expect to play. So we don't ever just separate the birther from the family. The Collective Birth Fund supports families who have been displaced by the closure of the Phoenix Indian Medical Center. Um, initially, we were really obviously focusing on indigenous families, but we were not unwilling to support other black and indigenous or families of color. Essentially, anyone who has some issue of being displaced in some kind of way or needing support to have the birth that they desire, they are eligible for this fund. The pandemic has impacted all of us, right? And of course, in particular, communities of color, and then you whittle that down to thinking about the experience of indigenous communities. They were re redirected to local hospitals. However, those local hospitals were not necessarily providing culturally responsive care. So not only do we maybe potentially have a vision of who's attending our birth, it's usually somebody that looks like us, thinks like us, sings our songs, is going to greet our child and our baby in the same way. And so that part was also lost, again, partially because of the pandemic because all of us are having to scramble because fewer people can be in the room. I do believe that the Collective Birth Fund is unique. So to be able to provide mutual aid to individuals with really a lot of dignity, believing their need, as, you know, not requiring a ton of red tape, right? Developing a system that's relationship-based where we feel good gifting, you know, a certain amount of money. I think that's special, right? We have our systems of checks and balances right and that's where the birth workers come in and so we know how to triangulate uh, but it's really based on trust and it's really based on again not making somebody who's in need have to go through a ton of hoops the way that individuals can qualify for the collective birth fund is first they'll go to our website that is where you can get information about if funds are available or not there is a google form that is linked on the website you just look for the collective birth fund you fill that out for yourself and then ideally there's also a form for your provider you could also have have your provider complete their form or their version. That's our system of triangulation, right? So we get the individual who needs the support and then their provider, assuming that we're asked to support a birth. If the request for funding comes outside of the birth, you need postpartum care and things like that, you can just individually fill out your form. We will review it and then we'll come back and ask you for any other type of documentation or information we need. Ahead of time, we just want to say thank you to anyone who's even considering contributing to the Collective Birth Fund. There are many ways that people can support us. Obviously, going to our website, you'll have the majority of information that you need to reach out to us. We are open to in-kind donations. We will make anything work. So really, more than anything, I hope that you all have understood through this conversation that we're relational. We want to talk to you. We want to dream with you. We want to innovate with you so that we can end up helping as many people as possible. Funding for programs as vital as the Collective Birth Fund 
and all the work held by the Siwapakli Collective is a priority for the Foundation. Before we continue, I would like to take an opportunity to thank our presenting sponsor, Tucson Electric Power, for supporting this year's Women Thriving Luncheon Series. We all want clean energy to protect our environment. We also need reliable energy to power our modern, busy lives. TEP's plan for a cleaner, greener grid means we don't have to choose. We're making our energy as clean as we can, as fast as we can, without compromising safety, reliability, or affordability. By 2035, we'll be providing 70% of our power from renewable resources. We're already on the right track with new wind and solar projects that will more than double our community scale clean energy capacity. We plan to reduce carbon emissions 80% by replacing our remaining coal-fired power plants with wind, solar, and storage systems. During today's session, we will cover some of the core tenets of the work our foundation does in support of our mission, where we innovate to create social, political, and economic change that achieves equity for women and girls. In Arizona, there are nearly half a million full-time working women who lack a college degree. Over 70,000 of those are single mothers Full-time working women, especially single mothers without a college degree, are likely to struggle to support their families. Among the five most commonly held occupations for single mothers of young children, none provide a median wage higher than $30,000. And without a pathway to further education, these mothers cannot increase their earning potential. In 2020, WFSA piloted a program to support these women called Pathways for Single Moms. This program is designed to help single mothers with young children earn a certificate in designated fields that our research shows will pay a self-sufficient wage. The program includes tuition, child care scholarships, emergency funds, educational and career coaching, and transportation assistance. Pathways for Single Moms and its wraparound supports are the result of collaborations with Pima Community College, Arizona Department of Economic Security, First Things First, and Pima County One Stop. Pathways is a multi-pronged approach that fundamentally shifts the future of low-income families by providing access to an innovative combination of educational and economic opportunities with a goal of empowering mothers with the tools they need to become economically self-sufficient. Today, we welcome Latricia to share her journey through the Pathways for Single Moms program. My name is Latricia. I'm the mother of six boys. I learned about the Pathways for Single Moms program. I was online looking to go back to school and I knew uh, the Women's Foundation, so I went on the site and I saw that there was a program through Pathways and the opportunity to go back to school. What motivated me to pursue the path of education and the building construction technologies um, is I've always had a love of home improvement and working with wood. So I really uh, wanted to get into that program and um, you know pursue my dream. I'm learning in the program um, how to work with hand tools, um, how to read blueprint readings, you know, working with power tools and just everything that goes behind uh, construction. You know, also, they teach us communication skills and employability skills. Pathways means for my future, the ability to get where I need to in my career, you know, more stability, being able to take care of my family uh, without having to use like government assistance. Pathways is giving me the opportunity to become more self-sufficient. Since joining Pathways, I've learned how to become a leader. I've also gained like communication skills and being able to talk and network with others. Sometimes we have these barriers in life that prevent us from going back to school with childcare, um, financial support in the home, and then also, you know, to um, Pathways has helped with those barriers by providing childcare, 
providing some financial support and even you know paying for the whole tuition. Pathways has helped support my family by providing resources for extracurricular activities after school. So that's been helping to give my kids something to do so that I can focus on my schoolwork and it's just been really uh, beneficial for me. My goals that I have for myself as I work through the program is by becoming successful, setting a good example for my kids, and also believing in myself that I can do this and I got this. The community should support funding for programs like Pathways um, because it is helping single mothers get the job and the career that they want, um, but also to bring their family out of poverty so they don't have to you know, depend on government assistance and they can take care of their family. The advice that I have for other single mothers that are looking to join the Pathways program is to just go for it, just open up that door and go through it. And there's other single mothers going through the journey with you. So, you know, just do it. You have that support from all the staff and the resources that they give you. Go and achieve your goal and there's gonna be people supporting you in that journey. Thank you for coming out to see what the Women's Foundation and Pathways has to offer and how they're helping the community and single mothers to be more successful in life. Tenacity and commitment look good on you, Latricia. We have exciting news for this program. After two years of incubation, WFSA has secured funding to launch the program statewide this fall with enough resources to support over 200 participants and their families. As a foundation, one of the most important roles WFSA plays is in securing the next generation of philanthropists. UNITAS is an award-winning teen philanthropy program that builds leadership skills among girls, young women, and gender-expansive teens. UNITAS increases the understanding of the importance of philanthropy while supporting the development of confident young leaders in our community. Through the UNITAS program, participants gain first-hand experience in relationship building, community service, leadership, social justice, and grant making. Each participating teen works through the philanthropy process each semester, granting up to $5,000 to organizations that work to improve the quality of life for women and girls in Arizona. Participants have an opportunity to work in collaboration with their cohort to determine a funding topic to consider during the semester. Welcome Isabella Mixton garcia and Ali Larkin-Smith to share their experiences as UNIDAS alum. I'm Isabella Mixton garcia I go to University High School and I'm a UNIDAS participant. Hi, I'm Ali Larkin-Smith and I go to Marina High School. I learned about the UNIDAS program during COVID-19 through my counselor. And I just wanted to get to know more like-minded people, especially with social justice issues. I learned about UNIDAS from my friend Alyssa Norris, who is also a participant at UNIDAS. And she told me just how amazing it was, so I had to join. This program means to me, in a way, that it makes me feel welcomed and happy about everything that's going on and all the people in there just make me feel super welcome. UNIDAS means inclusivity and acceptance and fun and self-care. It is a great space to have to be accepted and be able to talk about things that you believe in and learn about um, philanthropy and all sorts of issues surrounding women and people socialized as women. My idea of grant making increased a lot because I, as a freshman, I was very unsure about the terminology, but now I know 
more about it and especially like how it, how hard it is as well to find and donate money to others as well. So before Unidas, I knew what kind of what grants were. I knew that money was given to nonprofits, even students looking to go to school, but I had no idea about the process at all until I joined Unidas. It completely opened my eyes to the world of philanthropy and equitable philanthropy. My social justice views have expanded because I've become more aware of my surroundings, to be honest. And I realized just how many issues are prevailing today, like little side remarks about minorities and especially in the LGBTQ community. Unidas has given me the opportunity to actually form a, an educated opinion and educated belief system on, on different issues. My advice to new UNIA participants is that your volunteering or your help towards this program is really impactful and even the small things you do are noticed don't go unnoticed and it's very important to do these small little things even if it's like an hour of your day so my advice would be to look at people with empathy and to learn as much as you possibly can about things that are happening going on constantly like just be as educated as you can possibly be so you can really help people that need help. Philanthropy means to me that even just a little money, a little bit of your time is philanthropy. Philanthropy doesn't mean that it's like this huge big donation or this like you work six months with this program. No, it's just like you could put an hour in, you could put $5 in, it still makes a difference. Philanthropy is giving back to your community and it can be any amount of money or taking action. Unidas gives all of the money to the people that need it and it allows them to be able to make their own decisions with the money and be flexible. So it's not exactly the amount of money we give them, it's they get to decide what's best for them and their organization. What's like working with people in Unita is, is we have this very great dynamic called a brave space where we talk about issues that may not be so comfortable and then we also allow criticism in the group as well instead of just like a safe space where we just talk and don't really take any criticisms or comments. It's such a unique dynamic. We all respect each other. We all agree with each other most most of the time, but we also are able to be uncomfortable and learn about things that are not fun to learn about all, all the time. And we all go through the same experience. We do something at the beginning of every meeting um, called check-in or self-care. And it's a check-in where we go around and ask a question and talk about what's been going on in our lives. It's like a breath of fresh air. I learned in Unidas that you should be able to advocate for yourself and you should be able to stand up for what you believe in. And especially you should talk to other people, like whether or not it's your friends or family, you should let them know like this is what's going on and we shouldn't be blind to it. Even though this is my last year, I'll always have a very special place in my heart for Unidas. And I'll just take the friendships that I've made and take the knowledge that I've gained in philanthropy, social justice, all of the topics we talk about. I'll take all of those and be able to look at the world in a different and more accepting light and more inclusive light. And I'll hopefully still be able to keep contact with everyone that I've met because they're incredible. To teens that wanting to make a more equitable world, I know it's hard sometimes and like all these pressures, all these anxieties are coming to you and like there's so many problems that you can't fix, but every little thing matters. Every little step you take towards it counts. I would encourage them to support programs like Unidos because it allows for many unknown organizations to become more known and get more money to help them. And it also gives girls and women and people socialized as women, it gives them a space to be themselves and learn and help their community as much as they can. It creates a sense of empathy within teenagers that might not be empathized with. Someone should make a donation to Unidas because it helps 
elevate young women and non-binary people in the knowledge of philanthropy and grant making, which is a very important subject to know, especially in our world now that we face so many problems that we should learn how we can help like nonprofits and organizations in their goals. I'd love for anyone to come sit in and just for one um, meeting because the amount of things you can learn and amount of love you can get from it, it it's it's life changing. So please donate to Unidos and the Women's Foundation because they're incredible. These young people are just incredible. It is heartening to know that there are hundreds of young women throughout the state who are caring for community in such a thoughtful, intentional way. Building a culture of philanthropy takes investment from all corners of our community. Please join us in recognizing all of the sponsors for our 2022 Women Thriving Virtual Luncheon, including gold sponsors Southwest Airlines, Tucson Local Media, and Cox Communications. Your support makes our community thrive. Just a quick reminder that one lucky attendee will win round trip airfare for one from our airline partner, Southwest Airlines. Sharing the impact of the organizations we are able to fund each year is one of my favorite parts of the work we do. This year, we were able to fund 14 organizations with close to $1 million in total giving bringing our total giving to nearly $20 million. Our 2021 WFSA grantee partners, Emerge Center Against Domestic Abuse, Chicanos Por La Causa Incorporated, Innovation for Justice Program at the University of Arizona, James E. Rogers, College of Law, Planned Parenthood Arizona, Inc., Community Investment Corporation. Recipients for our Women and Girls of Color Fund, YWCA Southern Arizona, Phoenix Legal Action Network, Beyond the Hurt, Siwa Pactli Collective, Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro. Unidas Teen Program recipients, Southern Arizona Senior Pride, Integrative Touch for Kids. The Harriet Silverman Fund for 2022, Cochise Harm Reduction, Women Warriors, Southwest, Southern Arizona Adaptive Sports, Resilience Project. Congratulations to this powerful community. Let's learn more. I am so excited to announce the Keo Health Connection joined the CPLC Familia as the newest program under the Integrated Health, Social Services, and Education pillar. We focus on helping community members navigate the complex healthcare system. CPLC and Keo Health Connection will continue empowering lives, providing them with community resources, and also with free bilingual application assistance for access, kids care, SNAP, cash assistance, and the marketplace. Our mission is to connect individuals and families in need of healthcare and community resources. I have been able to obtain medical insurance, nutrition assistance, all because of Keo. They made the process very easy. I will never forget how they have helped me throughout all of these years. The biggest word I can think of is grateful, how eternally grateful I am to Keo. Six years ago, she was diagnosed with um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, stage four uh, cancer. And uh, because she is a hearing impaired or hearing challenged individual, the staff at Keogh Health Connection has always been patient and so respectful. I would say that with all of my challenges that came with my medical necessities, Keogh was able to help me through it all. Kio was ready, they knew what solution to give us, and that's what made Kio such a great organization. 
in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, our staff wanted to do something that was more than just putting out a statement. And so we tried to figure out something that we could do that was within our sort of core expertise. And so our staff decided let's do a BIPOC loan fund. I chose to participate in the BIPOC Community Loan Fund because it's giving access to business owners that don't normally have access. It's giving equity to business owners that don't normally have equity. It's giving people a chance to change their lives, even if it's in a small way. It's also giving people an opportunity to do something they've never done. I have never applied for a loan because I don't feel like I had all the right documentation that I needed, and I just didn't think I was ready or prepared to apply for a loan. So that's why this loan was just so different, because I didn't feel any pressure. Hello, my name is Maria Padilla. I have worked with Emerge for nine years um, and I am a licensed legal advocate. The funding from the Women's Foundation has uh, helped us in providing more in-depth support to our participants in court, um, also with documentation and providing emotional support while navigating the legal system. And my name is Anais Alonso and I have been with Emerge for three years and I'm also a licensed legal advocate I'm grateful for the Women's Foundation for giving us an opportunity to take the initial steps towards filling the gaps in the legal system that survivors of domestic abuse struggle with every day. Thank you for your support in this journey to improve our services to the community. For more than 25 years, Cox has been an important economic engine and community leader. We plan to continue providing access to advanced technologies essential to a prosperous economy and vibrant community. At Integrative Touch, we transform the way kids and families experience healthcare. Our impact is measured by the depth of the relationships we create and by the love felt by those we support. And we serve the whole child, the whole family, and the whole community. Meet Omar, a boy who has so many medical challenges, doctors describe him as a walking miracle. Over the past seven years, we've relieved his pain and reduced his suffering with integrative therapies through our in and outpatient programs. With our in-touch telefriend program, we provided two supportive peers so Omar could simply enjoy his childhood. Meet Vanessa, Omar's mom, who has given her whole life to helping keep Omar alive, in addition to the needs of her other kids. To care for her, we've supported her during hospital visits, and now we've enrolled her in our in-touch telewellness program. We've also enrolled Omar's nurses and doctors, giving them all tools to decrease anxiety, pain, and burnout, so they could help themselves and others. Integrative Touch has provided more than 4,500 hours of telehealth services in 2021, in part because of your support. We thank you for helping Omar, his family, and so many more through the important work of Integrative Touch. Amplify Voices helps survivors of sexual assault and trafficking discover their voice 
and develop a message focused on the triumph they discovered. Amplify also provides a platform to, to deliver those messages to a wider audience that inspires, uplifts, and brings about more understanding and compassion. Here is the impact of using your voice as an instrument of change. Even in the hardest times in our life, even in the most tragic things that happen to us, there is a message of hope and that there's a lightness inside of our darkness. So I'm so grateful to this program and to each and every one of the women who are a part of it. It is so empowering. It is um, the most spring thing that I've ever experienced. There's something about when women come together and we stand up for something that we all have this strong belief for. We are powerful. For more than 25 years, Cox has been an important economic engine and community leader. We plan to continue providing access to advanced technologies essential to a prosperous economy and vibrant community. Thank you for providing valuable and much needed services to Arizonans. Well, after three days of learning and lots of community love, I'm sure you're asking, how can I get involved? You can help us fund amazing organizations like these by donating today. It's as simple as using the donate button at the bottom of your screen. Every dollar raised helps WFSA continue granting to organizations like the ones you met today. But donating is just one of the ways you can get involved. You can also join us as a member of our Advocacy WE Network. Joining the WE Network allows you to take action during the legislative session and help us make policy change for women and girls across the state. You can also sign up for our newsletter and get updated with breaking news of up and coming programmatic work. You can do this by visiting womengiving.org and entering your email in the newsletter sign up box. Now, if you have made it this far, thank you. And it's time for the grand prize. One lucky attendee will win a round trip ticket on Southwest Airlines, WFSA's exclusive airline sponsor. And the winner is Terry Horton. Thank you so much for joining us and supporting the Women's Foundation for the State of Arizona. We remain ever committed to an Arizona where women and girls of all identities thrive. This is also a reminder to join us at 4 p.m. for our Master Mixology class, coming to you live from Tucson favorite, Whiskey Del Bach. Thank you again for being here with us. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you for attending the Women's Foundation for the State of Arizona's virtual luncheon. Our event has concluded. We welcome you to learn more about WFSA at womengiving.org.